today's episode of the Tech Corner is going to be replacing the system board on a PowerEdge 1800. Tools required, handy Phillips screwdriver, possibly a flathead. Let's get to it. Once your bezel is removed from the front, I don't have mine on currently, but there's just a black piece here that would uh, move downwards and the whole bezel would peel forward. Remove it and set to the side. We're going to undo our chassis screws. Take the lid off. Now once we get inside, that looks like a whole lot of stuff to take out of there. It's actually not so bad. Any of the cables that you may have here from expansion cards down in here, we're going to unhook from this black shroud. There's a release lever for the shroud here, and mine's broken, but there would be one here. You would press these down with your thumbs, and I just broke the other one. Lift this up. Unhook this cable down here for the rear fan. It's just a pinch and a lift. We're going to undo our backplane SCSI connection on this cable here. It's just down here. Just going to pull up. Might have to wiggle a little bit. Press down here, unhook from the backplane cage. We're just going to set that off to the side. We're going to undo our power cable for the backplane. It's just a pinch, wiggle and pull. Just kind of set that off in the back there. This fan, we're going to press down with our thumb. It pries forward, lift up, and it's got a cable. Like the rear fan, we're going to pinch, unhook and pull up, set that off to the side. Now we start seeing our cables for the system board down here. What makes this a lot easier, there's going to be a white, mine's unhooked, but this one's a pinch and a lift, and now we're going to come to the front of the machine. There's going to be four screws that hold our drive cage in. Now we're going to push that cage forward. You don't have to take it all the way out. This also is nice so you don't have to take out your hard drives. Now we're going to come back to the inside. Now this gives us all this room to get in here. So we're going to start undoing our IDE cables for our CD-ROM drives and the floppy. You can just tuck them back in there. And these just pry apart and lift up. This one here. Be careful when you pull up so you don't rip the ribbon cable out. I like to grab it by the black part and the top and kind of wiggle it and pull up. And just tuck him off to the side too. Uh, there's one more cable down here that's a pinch and lift. Now we're going to be moving our processors and RAM over to the new board. The processors are held in place. Now you may have one, you may have two. The process is the same. These push down, there's clips on the sides of the heat sink that kind of spread apart and lift up. Before you just lift this off of here, wiggle. This breaks the thermal compound off of the processor so you don't just lift the processor out of the socket and bend the pins. We're going to set that off to the side. Now the processor comes out with this lever here. We're going to lift that up and you see the socket move there. This releases the pins gently. Pull up and you'll notice all the pins. It's very easy to bend these to so set that off into a very safe place. Same thing for the other one. Press down, spread a little bit, not too far, lift, good wiggle, lift that metal tab up, gently lift that, set him with the other one. Now the memory dims, just like any other, they just spread apart, try to do them evenly lift those out of there, set them into a safe place as well. Now we have three power connections here. You may have two if you're running a non-redundant power supply and a distribution board. I have a distribution board redundant set up in this one so I have the extra ribbon cable. These you just pinch. You're probably going to have to wiggle them because they're usually pretty tight. Same thing with this one. Pinch, wiggle, pull. 
Now if you have this ribbon cable here, be careful not to rip the ribbon out, so you're going to grab it kind of as far down on the ribbon as you can, wiggle and pull, set that off to the side. Now there's one screw on the back of the system here. This guy here actually holds the tray that holds the system board in place. Now our bad board, we give it a small tap, pushes forward, and it lifts out like that. Now we're going to grab our new board. like a 45 degree angle here. Kind of might have to move your cables a little bit. Drop it down. Kind of grab from the metal part here and back on the edge of the cage where my hands are here so you don't rip anything off the board and push it into place. Sometimes it takes a little finesse. We're going to go ahead and tighten that screw back up in the rear to lock it. Nice and tight. Let's start with our power cables, the reverse of our disassembly here. Again, mine, I, have, I might have one more cable than you. Open our RAM sockets up. Press straight down onto them when they're open. You'll feel a nice click. Nice click. At this point, I would, um, if you have expansion cards here, go ahead and hook them up. It makes your life a little bit easier. I do not, so I'm just going to go ahead and start installing my processors. I'm going to open up both of the tabs for the reassembly here. And you'll notice on the processor, there's a gold triangle. You'll notice on the socket, there's a black triangle. We're going to line that up, depending if you have a little bit bigger proc or not. Mine are a little bit smaller, so they sit on the edge here. We're gonna, they should just fall into place. You'll notice the triangles face each other. Just falls into place there. Now we lock them. Same thing here, we're going to line up our triangles falls into place, locked. I'm not going to put the heat sinks on yet because I need to run some of these cables. Cables, cables, cables. And these on the back of this black thing here, there's little holders that kind of cable management. It doesn't have to be a beauty pageant, just functional. So this one here, this white one, Plug him into where that goes. This one's the floppy. Alright. Kind of just the reassembly here. The black one, straight down. This is the power board for the power button and LED lights in the front. Got him in there. Any of the cables are tucked up here. For our CD ROM drive. Same thing, we're gonna push him into the cable management here. Just make our life a little easier. Spread these open. You'll notice a notch. There's a notch there. Straight down. Put our fan back in for the front. You'll see a hole down in here. Just gonna kind of fish. This through there. It helps to have small hands. Just kind of pull as we go. The connection for that is in the front here. There's two tabs, two holes. Press it down, tilts back, click. Alright, now we're going to push our cage forward. Take our four screws that hopefully we didn't lose and taken it apart.
Now if you did lose them, you can, uh, they are a little bit longer, but the regular machine drive screws, they work just as good, they're just not as long. Run this one by here. It tucks into there. There's a little cable arm there. Now we're going to go ahead and put our heat sinks back on. Now, if you if you have a decent amount of thermal paste left on your processors, and you look at the bottom of your heat sink, and you still got a decent amount there, should I replace it? If you really want to, it's a good time, you know, to clean everything up while you're in there. You don't have to if you still have some thermal on there. If it was running cool before. Don't fix it. If you're getting new processors, absolutely put new thermal paste on there. The final piece of our assembly here. Rear fan. They're notched, so you can't mess it up. Just plug straight down. And this, there's a guide to kind of the inside here. And then this guy, there's a channel, small. It's going to go into there, and then it'll click into place. We'll run our cables as they were before. In my case, I don't have very much. These are kind of obtuse. They fit one direction, just like on the board. Plugs in. Take our lid. Put our bezel back on, plug it in, and you're good to go.